Uh, we recently had a patient that had a significant increase in TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. Um, <clears throat> we usually don't look at that, and I'll uh, tell you why in a few minutes, but uh, the rest of the story on this patient. Um, this patient is uh, very well read, as many of our patients are, and um, very well read in the functional medicine uh, area, and had wanted to look for this. Um, Earlier on, the TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, had been uh, normal, and then uh, it shot way up. Um, it turns out that uh, as we dug deeper, uh, it appears it may have been due to um, a, a krill oil supplement uh, from Mercola that the patient was taking for um, omegas, omega-3s. Um, <clears throat> now... Why do we not uh, usually test for TMAO? I do believe that it's a risk factor, and I do believe that it will turn out to be significant at some point. However, I don't think we understand completely what's going on. Uh, there are two major focus points and major reasons that we don't start out with TMAO testing. The first is the bigger issue, uh, as we all know, is diabetes. Diabetes is by far the number one cause of heart attack, stroke, uh, dementia, the things that kill and, um, and disable us. Um, <clears throat> number two, uh, so our first cut at looking at a patient's risk has to do uh, with getting very deep in terms of their carbohydrate metabolism. Um, just one other point, it, it isn't the diabetes that usually kills or disable us, disables us, it's the um, inflammation of the arteries to the kidneys, heart, the brain. Um, <clears throat> so we look for uh, that pre-diabetes, that decade or two when you're burning your arteries and your tissue and creating this risk. Um, <clears throat> now, what's the second reason that we don't look at uh, TMAO coming out of the blocks? Because it's tied up with uh, kidney function. And you end up wondering, is this a problem with kidney function or is it a problem with TMAO? Now, <clears throat> I've used the term TMAO, trimethyl uh, amine oxide, several times. Um, many of you, the viewers of this channel, have already heard of it. For those of you who haven't, just a brief description of it. <clears throat> but before we do, a, uh, an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. This is the Prevention Channel. We help uh, baby boomers avoid heart attack, stroke, uh, dementia, the things that cause disability and death uh, in, our, in our generation <clears throat> as we get middle-aged and older. So this starts, I'll give you a warning, this starts raising that whole vegan, vegetarian, uh, plant versus animal products diet debate. Uh, choline which is found in animal products with uh, fatty acids, um, <clears throat> is uh, when it's in the diet, is changed by the gut biome into TMA, trimethylamine. When trimethylamine uh, goes from the gut back up through the liver, the chemical factory, uh, and, and some filtration before it goes out to the bloodstream, the liver oxidizes this to form trimethylamine oxide. So <clears throat> that TMAO is supposed to be a significant cause or a precursor for um, inflammation and plaque in the arteries and uh, resulting heart attack, stroke, and uh, death. Now, <clears throat> so... I've got a study which uh, came out in Nature magazine, a very good magazine. Um, don't know if you can see that. Nature is a very, uh, usually very good science, and it deals with the second issue that I talked about. TMA is associated with mortality, impact of um, modestly impaired renal function. So. <clears throat> For those of you who want to get straight to the point, um, I'll do that 
And then for those of you who want to go a little bit deeper into the science, we'll do that uh, afterwards. The bottom line is this. This was a very good study. What they did was um, they took thousands of people in a town in Europe and um, <clears throat> studied them for TMAO and then followed them to see if they died. They did die. The guys with higher TMAO did die earlier. However, uh, once you adjust for renal function, it was only the guys that uh, the people, is, this was guys and ladies, um, it was only people that had impaired renal function that had significant increased mortality from trimethylamine oxide. So again, that gets you to my second concern about why we don't look for this coming out of the blocks. Um, <clears throat> so for the geeks that uh, want to get a little bit deeper into it, this was, um, there was a median study of 8.3 years in uh, 5,469 participants. Uh, 322 died. Uh, and TMAO was uh, tracked in these folks. <clears throat> they did see um, it was positively associated with death. Um, and I'll show you the, uh, the, the mortality tables in just a few minutes. But uh, after adjustment for several risk factors, it remained as an all-cause uh, high rate of all-cause mortality. However, this association was lost after further adjustment for urinary albumin excretion and GFR, or glomerular filtration rate, you know, the key things that you look at to measure potential uh, kidney disease. The association of TMAO with mortality was modified by uh, filtration rate in these analyses. Uh, when participants were stratified by renal function, TMA was associated with all-cause mortality only in subjects with a GFR less than 90. Well, <clears throat> that's actually pretty common to have a GFR less than 90, especially as you get older. So I don't think that just totally lets us out of the woods, especially for most people in their 60s. Uh, just a few other comments about the study. How was it done? It was called the uh, PREVENT study. They're described elsewhere, and it took patients out of the PREVENT study. Uh, <clears throat> way back in 97 and 98, these were inhabitants of the city of Groningen in the Netherlands uh, between the ages of 28 and 75. So here's one of the points to acknowledge. This is not just uh, 50, 60, 70, 80-year-olds. You're getting folks as early as the uh, 28 years old. So... Again, this uh, focus on um, uh, filtration rate is a bigger deal. Uh, you're look, you've got a lot more people in the earlier decades that have a GFR of 90 and above. Um, <clears throat> pregnant women and subjects with type 1 diabetes were excluded. Uh, albumin, urinary albumin concentrate was assessed in 40,800, 40, about 41,000 people. Subjects with a urinary concentration greater than 10, uh, there were uh, 8,000 of those. They were invited to participate. 6,000 were enrolled. A random, in addition, a randomly uh, selected group with a urinary concentration of less than 10, there were 3,400, uh, were invited to participate, in well, uh, participate as well. Um, and... 2,600 of those were enrolled, so there were 8,592 uh, individuals uh, from whom they did a screening. They did an early screening and a late screening and followed these people until death or um, being lost to follow-up. They did several other uh, versions of statistical analysis, but let's just look at the, uh, the groups. Uh, the mean age was 53. Um, plus or minus 12 years. Median TMAO level was uh, 3.2 micromoles um, with a range of 1.17 to 5.7. History of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes were more prevalent among subjects in the highest quartile of TMAO. 
So again, you're getting this uh, comorbid picture, prediabetes, um, history of uh, cardiovascular disease. Those folks are going to have some decrease in kidney function um, and some increased level of TMAO. So again, part of this raises the question of, is this TMAO more of a result of um, this uh, prediabetes and kidney disease? Uh, or um, result of those in a, uh, an animal-based diet? So uh, median follow-up was 8.3 years. 6.3 subjects died. That's 322 subjects died. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the life tables real quick. And again, those are scary. But once you start looking at them, thinking through them, not that much of a surprise. These are the levels of TMAO. And these are the uh, life tables. In other words, when somebody, this is a Kaplan-Meier type table. So if everybody lives the um, line were to go straight across, every time somebody dies, you get a drop in the line. So the uh, lowest levels of TMAO had the highest uh, survival rates. The highest levels of TMAO had the lowest survival rates. So that's you look at that and you start getting an understanding of why people uh, get so concerned about TMAO. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, well, just very briefly, this helps us understand uh, how much of a risk is it? Is it a 7, 8, 20 times? No, it's more like 1 to 2 times. Uh, or not 1, but uh, it's, not, it's not a huge increase. It's a little bit around doubled. Um, here is the other... Thing. So again, after looking at that mortality rate, you get very concerned. But you go back to the end of it and you realize that was only for, there was significant increase in mortality only for people with evidence of kidney disease, decreased kidney function. So is it the chicken or the egg? Or is there yet another mechanism? In this study, what they said was, you know what, <clears throat> we don't think it's just TMAO alone. We think that there is a side mechanism where you have kidney function contributing to all-cause mortality, not just the TMAO going straight here, or maybe a mechanism where you have both of these. So again, <clears throat> if you understand what's going on, please uh, comment, let us all know, let us in on the secret. Um, or if you have theories, I think those would be appreciated as well. Um, thank you again for your interest.